The illustration you're looking at is of two exoplanets. The one to the left is a super-Earth-sized exoplanet. The one to the right is a mini Neptune. These are the most common planet types in our galaxy. And this was quite a strange discovery for us. Because we don't have any of these exact types in our solar system. But how do we detect these exoplanets? One way scientists detect these planets is known as the transit method. This method involves looking for a decrease in the brightness of a star as a planet passes in front of it. This decrease in brightness is called a transit, and it allows astronomers to determine the size and orbital period of the planet. Another method is known as astrometry. This method involves measuring the small changes in a star's position, caused by the presence of a planet orbiting around it. This method is best suited for detecting planets that have a very long orbital period. We now know that there are thousands of planets outside of our own solar system. But unfortunately, most of them are unlikely to be habitable. By humans, at least. This is because many of the exoplanets we have discovered so far orbit red dwarf stars, which make up about 75% of all stars in our galaxy. These stars are much smaller and cooler than our own sun, and their habitable zones are much closer in. This means that any planet orbiting within the habitable zone of a red dwarf star would be much closer to the star, which could cause them to become tidally locked and have inhospitable conditions on one side and freezing temperatures on the other. However, our sun is a yellow dwarf star, and it is this fact that allowed life to develop on Earth. The habitable zone of our solar system is the region where the temperature is just right for liquid water to exist. This zone extends from 0.7 to 1.5 astronomical units from the Sun, where one astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. One exoplanet that has gained a lot of attention in recent years is Kepler 452b, which was discovered by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope in 2015. Kepler 452b is about 1.6 times the size of Earth and orbits a G2 type star that is very similar to our own Sun. This star is called Kepler 452 and is located about 1,400 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. Kepler 452b completes a full orbit around its Sun in 385 days and is located in the habitable zone of its star which means that it could potentially have liquid water on its surface. It is also estimated to be about 6 billion years old, which is about 1.5 billion years older than our own Sun. This means that any life that may have developed on Kepler 452b would have had more time to evolve than life on Earth. However, if Kepler 452b has the same density in proportion to Earth, the fact that it's 60% larger means the gravity will be stronger, and the type of life that might evolve on such a planet would be different in many aspects to what we have here on Earth. While Kepler 452b is one of the most promising exoplanets we have discovered so far, it is important to note that we can only make estimated observations of its atmosphere and other characteristics. In the search for habitable exoplanets, one of the most exciting prospects is the discovery of a Class M exoplanet. These are planets that are similar in size and composition to Earth, and that orbit within the habitable zone of a star that is similar to our own Sun. Although the chances of finding a Class M exoplanet are relatively low, the discovery of one would be a major breakthrough in the search for extraterrestrial life. Unfortunately, even if we do discover a habitable exoplanet, we currently don't have the technology to travel there within our lifetime. The only way for us to visit these planets is by either sending colonies on large spaceships that will take thousands of years to get there, or by developing a warp drive that would allow us to cover vaster distances than light speed. We're going to look into warp technology in our next video. Despite these challenges, the search for habitable exoplanets continues to be one of the most exciting areas of research in modern astronomy. 
What do you think about the possibility of life on Kepler-452b? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Although you can't visit Kepler-452b just yet, you can hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.